Hello, and welcome to the ANSYS Fluent Getting Started. If you are a new or occasional user of ANSYS Fluent, this is a course for you. By covering this material, you will learn the basics of what CFD is and how it works. Let's start by trying to define what CFD is, which is a method to predict fluid flow, heat and mass transfer, chemical reactions, and other related phenomena. It does this by solving equations representing Newton's second law, conservation of mass, conservation of energy, and any other quantities being transported by the flow. CFD is used to provide detailed information about the flow field. This includes information such as the distribution of pressure, velocity, temperature, and other quantities throughout the flow field. Because this distribution is known, it's possible to determine the forces resulting from the flow, like drag and lift forces. If you have a gas liquid or gas solid or other multi-phase flow system, it can let you know how the phases are distributed. Or if you have a problem involving multiple different species in the same phase, it can provide information about chemical reactions or combustion or pollutant formation. And really, this is just a small subset of the kind of information that CFD can provide. As it says on the right, CFD has many uses throughout the engineering process, whether in performing conceptual studies of new designs, detailed product development, optimization, troubleshooting, or redesign. But the last point in blue in the lower right corner is the most important one. CFD complements testing and experimentation by reducing the total effort and cost to perform experiments. It does not eliminate the need for these things, but rather, it reduces the number of tests that need to be conducted, and it can also provide a wealth of information about the performance of a device or system that can be difficult to obtain experimentally. Since we are talking about the CFD process, it makes sense to continue by briefly describing how CFD works. The ANSYS CFD solvers are based on the finite volume method, and the way this works is you take the system you want to study, which is known as the domain, and you discretize it into a finite set of control volumes. So imagine the domain is part of a tube, as shown on the right. You can see from the mesh lines, it has been divided into a large number of mesh cells, and each of these mesh cells forms a control volume. Now, for each individual control volume, we can write the equations that we are solving. These would include conservation of mass, the momentum equations, which are derived from Newton's second law of motion, and then possibly also conservation of energy or species, depending on the problem that's being solved. The general form of these equations is presented here on the slide. It includes terms that represent unsteady behavior, convection, diffusion, and source terms, which might be things like body forces in the momentum equation or heat released by chemical reactions in the energy equation. If you replace phi in the equation with the corresponding variable in the right-hand column of the table here, then you'll get the continuity, momentum, or energy equations. These are partial differential equations, but after we discretize them, which means we write them in discrete form for each of the control volumes, they become a system of algebraic equations where the solution for a given cell also depends on the solution in its neighboring cells. It's a little bit more complicated than this because the equations are nonlinear, but that's the basic idea. Finally, once the system of algebraic equations has been assembled, numerical methods are used to solve all the equations, which then gives us the CFD solution. 